Shalom, all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kwadash, double honor unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who were laboring this word and doctrine. Shalom, Labachaya, and peace unto the elect. Now we're going to deal with a bit of Syrac too. See where the Spirit leads it from thence. So, Syrac, or Ecclesiasticus 2. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, whose name is what? Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father, and we worship him, Bahasham, in the name. Of Yahweh Shai, for example, if you were to throw up or send up, Salaki, if you were to send up a prayer for the Lord's Prayer, <clears throat> ultimately you're praying in the name of Yahweh Shai. Why is that? Because He taught you how to do that. He taught us how to do that, rather. And so He taught us how to do it, and we're doing it the way He set forth. So that's in the name or in the reputation. But when we say it, we say it literally, we say it verbatim. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Kahalayim, or Kahalal. Kafahalath, La Yahweh, unto Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. We also say Bahasham, Racha Kwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit that maketh, where it maketh intercession. That talks about that as well. But it's really the Spirit that revealed this whole truth to us through a man teaching, of course. Alright. We've got this Sirach 2. And one, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So just because you come in and there you have you have the sweetness, right? The sweetness and, and non receiving it with joy. And it's in your mouth is sweet. It's all very exciting. It's all new to you. And then it'll be in your belly for bitterness, man. You know, persecution will come, trouble, uh, affliction, contention, strife among people of the world or whatever, your family members maybe. And these are these are all gonna come. And that's a temptation. You might be like. Well, no, if you, um, if you eat this pork or whatever, if you eat this, or if you get down with this, if you celebrate this birthday or whatever like that, then we'll be cool with you or we'll give you this amount of money. Or No, it doesn't have to be as, as clear cut as that. That's just an example. But you're going to face affliction. You're going to face temptation. People trying to well, tempt you. It's like the tempter. Hashatan. Matthew 4, Luke 4. Yahweh Shai gave the greatest example of that. Tried to use scripture out of context. And he said, How did he get him? He cut him with the word. He didn't come up and try it well. He wasn't trying to use Esau's blessing to deliver himself. And we're not. And it's, it's all through. It's all, it's all spiritual, man. You have to have everything, look at everything as spiritual and remember it's spiritual. Now, in the moment, you might forget, but you have to just breathe, man. <laughs> Take time, breathe, examine it, meditate upon it, and say, Hold on. Is this just some random coincidence? Or is it the Lord testing me? Now it is a coincidence meant to happen, an incident at the same time. But that doesn't mean it's not of the Lord. Or, sorry, not from the Lord. Now you get trials, you get tempted. By the tempter, of course, but who's, who rules over Satan? Who gives him his orders? The Heavenly Father. Sirach 2 and 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Right, so set your heart aright. Don't set it medium. Well, I guess if I just do this, if I just sin to get to take this W, to take this perceived win, really you're doing a loss, man. Because what's that? It's death. The wages of sin are death. Soon to Romans 6 and 23. So you have to examine yourself. Like it talks about examining yourself, whether you be in the faith, know that you're not reprobates. In fact, let's try and pull it if I can remember it. I believe it's 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, which it is. It said, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahawashai Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. And you don't want to be a reprobate, a void of judgment. You want to be keeping it, and, and of course, there's going to be things we struggle with in the flesh. That's the flesh. That's the battle. Condition of the battle. Set that heart around, constantly endure. Meaning what always get ready for it to be a marathon, man. You think, oh this will be over quickly. You just just expect it. Obviously we make haste for the Lord to come back. There's a a balance we have to do. Like it says a just wait is, is the Lord's delight. Right, but a false balance, that's wicked. That's abominable even, according to the scripture. Make not haste in the time of trouble. Don't be 
hasty man don't try before praying on it before how do, it says um let's try to search this bear with me do nothing without counsel is what I'm looking for Let's just search this. Right, forgive me. Let me search it though. What is Syrac 32 and 19? Okay, okay. Okay, Syrac 32 and 19. Do nothing without advice, and when thou hast once done, repent not. Now I thought he said, do nothing without counsel. But counsel, really, that, that's the same thing as advice. So without consulting the brothers around you, and <laughs> I don't just mean Israelites, because Jake will tell you, yeah, man, just go ahead, do it, man. Take, take that guy's thing, man. Thinking like a ninja, man. Yeah, you know what I mean by ninja. He would say, yeah, but Simeon was called ninja. You know the connotation, man. Thoughtless, a brute beast, man. <laughs> same, way, same way Edom calls you a ninja. Those, um, what do you call it, an exaggerated stereotype how people play out, especially when you have Edom ruling over the record companies and everything like that, and certain things, ghostwriters, and they'll put out a thing. They think, nah, man, it comes from Jake, it's organic, I should behave like that. And then Jake begins to perpetuate that and actually push that out as, uh, without, it's like, um, what do you call it, when you siphon something. First, you need a little catalyst. And go look up the, what a catalyst is. First, you'll, you'll take a little catalyst, or like um, for siphoning petrol, for example, you'll suck on the the straw, or whatever it is, the pe the piece of plastic, and then once it's got that pressure, it, it can just flow through. So once that pressure is applied from Edom, and they'll be like, then you take after his way. Then you just emulate the wicked Jakes. Edom don't need to do anything. So we need to do do it with counsel. And constantly in German. Right, Sarek 2. And 2, set thy heart aright and constantly in Jer and make not haste in time of trouble. Just cleave unto him who, the Lord, and cleave unto Yahawashai. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. It's like you forget. How can you forget? You forget what there's a resurrection. Just, there's no easy way out of this, man. We're stuck in here for what? For punishment. Not to destroy us, but to punish us. And we deserve it, we would punish our children. And what, what is he who receives not chastising of the Father? He's a bastard. <laughs> right, Baruch 4 and 6. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Yahweh or power to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. So that's why. Not because he just went, oh, Let's just destroy Israel. Although he, put, he, he thought to at a certain point, and Moses had to say, you have to remember your covenant now. You have to remember what happened. And um, what, what you've already sworn, you can't go against that. And sort of persuade. And again, you know, it's already set up in the spirit where the Lord's the ultimate director of all these things. Right? And it's true, it, you would be a bastard. And I laugh at that because the, the way bastards use it, at least in England, is like a swear word. Like if someone's, you might have a, a, a female dog's name as a bitch, that's a swear word. And then, quote unquote, swear word, you know what I mean by that? Not swearing as in making an oath, but a so, so called swear word. And then the, the male equivalent tends to be a bastard. But truly, what is a bastard? We'll read. Right, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, on down. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So you're not going to be the sons, which is what the adoption. You're not able to receive that without chastening. Right, it said like, Confirming the souls of the disciples that what through much tribulation 
that we, we may enter the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And that's the same thing now. Just because it's, it, we've had trouble. <laughs> Jacob's always been in a, in a trouble pretty much. But not Jacob's trouble. It's in that ultimate, that ultimate trial and trouble. Which the elect will be redeemed out of. The hour of temptation is known as in the scripture. When he saw Edom, he's, about to, he's trying to fill his belly. And he's going to make the RFID microchip mandatory. Right, necessary to buy and sell. And you've even seen with the Pentagon making updates. I say, that's sensationalism. Well, what about now? It's pretty realistic now, even on the carnal level. You know, car, uh, the, the natural man can receive that. Right, Hebrews 12. And we'll just skip down to 12 and 11 to get to the point. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when you, you weren't allowed to eat, um, I don't know, some, some junk food or whatever, and then you get back into training, you know it feels good? Because you, you don't feel like you've, you've slacked off. I'm just talking about like a bodily exercise, which actually profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. So we use the, that comparison to draw the point out. But really it's talking about this. Every tribulation, every trial, every trouble, Every stress, every anxiety that you go through is just going to strengthen you, man, if it's your lot. And the Lord deals with, sorry, whoever the Lord deals with, he chastens. Like it said, well, if, if you've got a father and he's not chastening you, he's not um, correcting you, then does he really care about you? Sirach 2. And 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when not changed to a lower state. So don't start thinking like a ninja, man. You're not going to redeem yourself out of this. Not with Esau's blessing. Not by carnal means. You have to endure it. No, it's not meant to be nice. We weren't put in, scattered among, in, into our lands of, ca our capture lands, our lang lands of captivity. Forgive me for the stuttering. We weren't scattered to the lands of our captivity for, for enjoyment. It's not a field trip. It's not a holiday. It's to punish us, to chasten us, to make us pure, clean. That's where you get the, the idea of a caste system, from the Latin castus, chast, which is a French word. It goes into cleanness, purity. Right? It used to be in um, Old English, at least. It's, if a woman was chast, if a virgin was chast, it'd mean no man had gone, on into, gone in unto her. It said, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So this is how we get tried. You're not meant to think, oh my gosh, what is happening? This is weird, this is strange. <laughs> You're not meant to think, think it's strange. Now where am I? James. James 1. And... James 2. <laughs> Right, James 3, Salah, yeah? Let me just find it. I think it's in James 1 and... Where is it? No, 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 no. Oh, we'll go there. James 1 and 2. In fact, James 1 and 1. James, a servant of Yahweh and of the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Like Paul said in Romans 5, around 3 on down. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wanting meaning to lack in Old English, like it talks about in want of all things. 1 Peter 1 and 19, I think. Okay, let's try 2 Peter. If not, I'm going to have to search these up. I'm a bit rusty today. Right, let me look it up. Oh, I was literally there. 1 Peter 1 and 7. Oh, 1 Peter, not James 1 and 7. That's why. All right. All right, perfect. 1 Peter 1 and 6. 
Wherein ye greatly re no 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 context. Yeah, we'll do the first Peter one and six. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. You see a theme cropping up. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Wait, what? We were meant to be tried as gold tried in the fire. Acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You know what? It boils you. Not boils you, it burns you. Not even burns you, it purifies you. Because you, when you go into gold, it's putting the fire to get rid of any impurity. That's why you do it if you've ever played like a game at Minecraft or RuneScape. Or one of them sort of medieval mining games. You know, you put in an ore. When you go into that, you put in an ore into a furnace. And what comes out of the furnace is pure. It's got rid of all the impurities. So that's what the trial of our faith is meant to be. First Peter 1 and 7, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Yehawashai HaMashiach. And you've got First Peter 4. I think that... First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding glory. Exceeding glory? Exceeding joy. Ye may... I butchered that. Let me just read it again. First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And there's gonna be there's gonna be a time of Jacob's trouble. Contrary to what other groups teach or go back on or well if you watch the video, moron. I'm talking about Bishop Nate, Nathaniel, out of IUIC, you said there's not gonna be a time. And there was a pork chop pastor getting on him, Banyam Yam, if I'm not mistaken. It sounded like it. He had the accent of that part of the world, but who knows? Could have been a tear, <laughs> who knows? Either way, he was getting on him, and he was, he, he, went, he went into Daniel 12 and 1, he was hitting the scriptures, and there's no way around it, there will be a time of Jacob's trouble, but acknowledge at the end of that, he shall be saved out of it, he the elect, and the, the mercy ultimately will be everyone out, out of the loins of that elect, Every, everyone being of, or out of Jacob, innit? Everyone out of Jacob's trouble. We'll make it in the end, that's mercy. Right, it says, but 1 Peter 4 and 14. So, Salachi, so it, although there's shame, contempt, trouble, tribulation, temptation, all of that to try you at the end, you're going to be refined, man. And you're going to get a reward. Like I said, we've, we've looked. I believe it was Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but was it not Peter that asked the Lord? He said, well, we've forsaken all manner of things on this side. What, what is our reward? And what was said back unto him? That's your homework. First Peter 4 and 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of Yahweh resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but, of your, but on your part he is glorified. And it talks that you're not meant to suffer as a sinner, but rather as a so-called Christian. Meaning what? A follower of Yahawashai, an Israelite that believes in Yahweh Bahasham Yahawashai. That's a true Christian, that's a scriptural, quote unquote, Christian. Now the word Christian itself has been perverted and confused. But that's what it, that's what stands, we're meant, to, we're meant to desire, what does it say? That they were counted worthy. They're such a worthy, worthy stuff. I think this is the last one. And I'll do it before I cross the road and then I've gone out. All right, there it is, Acts chapter 5 and 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for his name. And then the next one as well, the same way, you're going to suffer on this side, well, there's going to be a reward. Romans 8 and 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So there's order to it, man. The so-called oops doctrine. Yeshaya Yaquab. Yeah, order in prophecy. So with that, 
Shalom. I pray it was edifying. Double honors, double honor unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine, and have a hundred percent truth. Shalom, shalom, shalom unto elect, unto the elect. I can't really speak English right now, so forgive me. And of course, all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. Shalom.